All right, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Mr. Hastings, and the reason you're watching this is your teacher thinks uh, something special of you. And so we're going to try and get you ahead, give you a little bit of an advantage here. So I want to talk about our two key features that we're learning up front, just in case you missed it. Number one is the x-intercept. Well, what is the x-intercept? That's where we our function crosses the y-axis, all right? Well, how about our y-intercept? It means the same thing for y. It's where our function crosses the y-axis. And so what we want to do is we're going to look at a graph, and we're going to say, okay, what is our x-intercept? What is our y-intercept? And we're going to be looking at it where that function crosses the axis. All right, so let's look at our first example. We have this graph right here, and you see that this line right here is actually going to represent our function. So I'm even going to write the word function right here. And I want you all to think for a second. Do you all think that this is a linear function or a quadratic function? Do about three seconds. And yes, you're absolutely right. It is a linear function. Now imagine I'm an artist and that's supposed to be a straight line. Well, we can pretend. But right here, we have two points. And I want to I ask you, which one do you think is the y-intercept? Well, we said the y-intercept is where we cross the y-axis. And so right here we have our x-axis. Right here we have our y-axis. And because this line is crossing our y-axis right here, we know this is our y-intercept. And guys, in the future, instead of writing y-intercept, I'm going to abbreviate it by writing y-i-n-t. Well, obviously, if this is our y-intercept, we want to ask, what is this right here? And we know that this is going to be crossing the x-axis, which would make it the, give you three seconds, one, two, three, all right, and we'll call that the x intercept. And guys, from now on, I will abbreviate the x-intercept by writing x-i-n-t. So one more time, our y-intercept is where our function crosses the y-axis, and our x-intercept is where our function crosses the x-axis. And right now, in front of you, you have five problems. I want you to pause this video, and I want you to go ahead and attempt those five problems and label the x and y-intercept on each one of them. All right, now right here what I have on the board is I have problem number five of the last five problems that you did. And this way we can check your final answer and see if we got the answers correct. So let's ask ourselves first, what's the y-intercept of this graph? And so we know our y-intercept is where we, our line crosses the y-axis, correct? And that would be right here. So we know that this is our y-intercept. Now, what number is this? Let's go ahead and count it out. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if you got that your y-intercept was 6, that is correct. Well, how about right here? This is where we're crossing the x-axis, which makes it our what? It makes it our x-intercept. And if you got 1, 2, 3, but wait a second, we went to the left, so it would have to be a negative 3, if you got negative 3 for the x-intercept, that is correct. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the next part of the lesson because I want you to be able to see a function and I want you to be able to take that function and be able to find out the y or x-intercept purely without the graph. So right here I have our very first example of looking at a function without the graph and we want to be able to find out, okay, what is the y-intercept of this function without seeing the graph first. So our question is, what is the y-intercept of y equals 2x minus 8? Well, this brings us to a very big rule for the y-intercept. Our y-intercept is where x equals 0. And I'm going to elaborate more on that in just a second, but we want to know what the y-intercept is when x equals 0. So we are going to take our function right here, y equals 2x minus 8, and I actually want to rewrite it using substitution changing my x value. So that's going to look like y equals 2 parentheses minus 8. And think back to functions, we always want to take the x out completely using our parentheses as a placeholder before putting our number back in. And for the y-intercept specifically, we need to plug in the number 0. Well, guys, you all know this. We're going to drop down our y. We have y equals. And should we multiply or subtract first? We should multiply. So y'all know this, 2 times 0 is 
0, minus 8. We just bring down the minus 8. We didn't do anything with it. And now we have y equals 0 minus 8, which is negative 8. Awesome, awesome. And so, guys, we know that right now y equals negative 8, and we can also say that our y-intercept is negative 8. Now, here's how I want you to double-check this on your own. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the graphing function in your calculator, and I actually want you all to plug in this, y equals 2x minus 8. Now, you have to be very careful. When you go to your calculator in the graph, it's actually going to pop up f1 of x equals. Well, f1 of x is actually the same way as saying y. So the only thing that we want to plug in here is the 2x minus 8. So where it says f1 of x, we'll write 2x minus 8. And then I want you all to go ahead and hit the enter button. And looking at that line on your graph, see if that line actually did cross at negative 8. Now I'll give you about, uh, just go ahead and pause the video, do that right now. You should see that your graph looks something very similar to mine. And if we were to go ahead and count down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, well, we would see that our y-intercept is actually at negative 8. And our graph matches the answer that we got algebraically. Now, before I get into the x-intercept, just go ahead and review yourself. What is the x-intercept right there? I'll give you a couple seconds. And we know if we count over, we get 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, we know that our x intercept is going to be at 4. And guys, now I'm going to explain that to you algebraically and go ahead and flip to the next example. Okay, so this brings us to our second example, and we want to know what is the x-intercept of y equals 4x minus 2. Well, let's think back to our y-intercept. If to get the y-intercept we had to set x equal to 0, what do you think we would have to set equal to 0 to find the x-intercept? Well, you're right. We'd have to set y equal to 0 to find the x-intercept. Okay? Well, this one's a little bit trickier. So as we look at this, we're actually going to take this y right here. And because there's no coefficient in front of it, I actually don't even have to use the parentheses. I can just go ahead and say, okay, 0 equals 4x minus 2. And now it's a, instead of solving, I'm sorry, instead of simplifying the right side, in this case, we actually have to solve it. So let's go ahead and draw our line. Give you a second to write that down. 0 equals 4x minus 2. We just took the y, turn it to a 0. And then we have to ask ourselves, what should we get rid of first? The 4 in front of the x or the minus 2? We all know we should get rid of that minus 2. And we do that by doing the opposite. The opposite of minus 2 is? All right, good, plus 2. Now remember what we do to the right, we have to do to the left, and plus 2, and 0 plus 2 gives us 2 equals 4x. And of course, guys, what do we make right here? Yeah, exactly, made our 0 pair. Now, we are one step away, and we want to get rid of the 4 in front of the x. We want to get rid of the multiplication. If you remember, we want to get rid of multiplication by dividing, and so we'll divide both sides by 4, the number in front of x. And guys, always draw a line through 4 divided by 4 to represent that we now have a 1x. We get x equals, and if you want to plug in 2 over 4 into your calculator, well, 2 over 4 reduces to what? 1 half. And so we're saying in this specific instance, our function should cross the x-axis at 1 half. And what I want for you all to do is go ahead and pause this video right here and go ahead and graph this on your calculator and see, does the line on your calculator actually cross the x-axis at one half? All right, now, we're on to example three, and this is where I want to take what we did with example one and combine it with example two. So our question for example three is, what is the x and y intercept of y equals 3x minus one? Well, let's break these down individually. In fact, I'm going to draw a line so we can have our work on both sides. So right here, let's go ahead and write the x-intercept first. And we know that for our x-intercept, y has to equal 0. So we're going to write x-intercept y equals 0. And now I want to rewrite this y equals 3x minus 1. 
Well, instead of y, I'm going to plug in my value for y, which is 0 equals, and then the rest of this, will it change or remain the same? Well, we don't know what x is. That's what we're trying to find. So we'll just write 3x minus 1. Now, from right here, what do we want to get rid of first? The 3 or the minus 1? And the thing we want to get rid of first is the minus 1. Guys, I keep hearing people say this over and over and over again. When I say, why do we want to get rid of the 1 first, people say, to get x by itself. Well, that's not correct. The reason we get rid of the 1 first is because we always get rid of subtraction before we get rid of multiplication. Remember, we're doing PEMDAS, our order of operations, in reverse. Well, what's the opposite of minus 1? Okay, plus 1. And you can draw your line if you'd like. And what is 0 plus 1? 0 plus 1 is going to give us 1. And now we have 1 equals 3x, and we're one step away. How do we get rid of that 3? We divide. Very good. And so we'll divide both sides by 3, and we get this. We get that our x-intercept is 1 over 3. So I'll just go ahead and write it out like that. Our x-intercept is 1 over 3. Now let's come on down here, and we know to find our y-intercept. This is where we set x equal to 0. Okay, so x equals 0, and we're going to write it out as y, because it's not changing, equals 3. I wish I always take, whenever I want to take my x out, I have to show that I'm taking it out by writing a set of parentheses, and then minus 1. Now, right here we know x equals 0, so in place of our x, we're going to substitute in our 0. And now we have y equals, and y'all tell me, what is 3 times 0? 0, correct. And so we have 0 minus 1, and now we get y equals, well, what is 0 minus 1? Negative 1, good. So we have y equals negative 1. Well, technically, even though this is y equals negative 1, it's also our y-intercept is 1. Now, I know this is a little crowded, but let's recap. We have our x-intercept is equal to 1 over 3, and our y-intercept is positive 1. And what I'm going to do when we come back is I'm going to erase this, and we'll actually have the graph up. Now, when I tell you all to pause, I want you all to do what we've been doing. Go graph y equals 3x minus 1, and then actually check on your graph. Is the x-intercept at 1 third, and is our y-intercept at 1? And I'll tell you how to do that a little bit more in a second. But go ahead, pause it, try it on your own. Okay, and we're back to this problem. You should have graphed it. You should have the, uh, the function in your calculator. And as you, as you look at it, we know that our y-intercept was negative 1. And that's pretty obvious, okay, because we're crossing our y-axis right here at negative 1. So we can say, okay, our y-intercept on the graph is at negative 1. But what about our x-intercept? Well, look, we can look at it, we can kind of eyeball it, and yeah, we can say, hey, you know what, that's probably, that's probably pretty close to saying the x-intercept is at 1 third, okay? But we don't know for sure. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and give you a way to use our calculator we can actually get the specific decimal answer. So, I want y'all to press this. I want you to push menu. And then, what does number 5 say? 5 says trace. And so we want to hit trace, and then we want to push number 1, which says graph trace. And once we do this, menu 5, 1, you'll actually have um, something like a little a little crosshair, it should pop up on your y-intercept. Now all you have to do is push 1 to the right, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and send your, your little crosshair here, put it on the x-intercept, and that should actually show you something like this. I'll show you a little box, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this y-intercept, I don't want us to get confused. Show you a little box, and it should say parentheses, point, 3, 3, 3, comma, 0, 
And that point 333, is that in the x position or the y position? Well, we know it's in the x. And so once again, when our y value is 0, our x-intercept is 0.333, which as a fraction is the same as 1 third. Now what I want you all to do is you have four problems in front of you. You're going to have about uh, three, four, um, well, let's say about five minutes. And I want you to do those four problems. And I want you to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept, find them using algebra, plug in your 0, and then double check it with your graph. And you can kind of sketch that graph on the graph to the right provided on this worksheet. Okay, now let's go ahead and do a little bit of a challenge. Just in case you were able to finish up quickly, I really want to get into the nuts and bolts of why, why are we doing what we're doing here. So here's our critical thinking question. And when you can understand these concepts conceptually, you will be able to really understand the math at its most uh, basic level. So right here, the question is this. To find the y-intercept, so our y-intercept will cross the y-axis. Why are we setting x equal to 0? And once again, when you can answer the y in math, you truly know it. So we know that this is our y-axis. This is our x-axis. And we know right here where our line or our function crosses the y-axis, we have to set x equal to 0. So I want you to pause it. And I actually want you to take about one minute and think about this on your own. Why? Why is it that in this point we want to set equal to zero? So go ahead and pause that right now, and then when we come back, I'll go ahead and give you the explanation. Okay, so what did you think? Well, here's the answer. The reason that we have to set x equal to zero is I want you to look at the y-axis as a whole. When you're on the y-axis, have you moved to the right. Has your x values moved in the positive direction? Well, right here, the answer is no. You stayed exactly on the y-axis. Have you moved to the left? Have your x values moved in a negative direction? And the answer is no. Your, your y-intercept has not moved to the right, it's not moved to the left, and if it doesn't move at all, well, what value represents nothing? Zero. So, Right here, we know that because x equals 0, that's where we're going to find our y value. Now, let's take this one step further. What about, what about our x-intercept? Okay, For our x-intercept, we know we set y equal to 0. Well, why is that? When you're right here anywhere on the x-axis, have you moved up or have you moved down? And the answer is... No, you've stayed exactly on the x-axis. And when you haven't moved up, you haven't moved down, your value is zero. And that's the why behind this. And if you completed this and you understand this, I've got one more challenge for you. All right, here's going to be our final challenge to really take what we just talked, so got, uh, talked about. So if you looked at what we just talked about, you really understand these key features. Well, let's, let's take it up just a whole other level, okay? We know that this line represents some function, but we actually don't know how to find that function yet. Later on in the year, we will know how to find it, but not for right now. So here's what we want to do. Here's the question. What is the value of y when x equals 3? So we're saying, hey, we know what x is, but what is y? But if you look, we don't have any sort of function. All we have is this line. And notice more specifically, we're not talking about the x-intercept or the y-intercept. But we want to take that concept that we talked about last time and apply it to this. So, we know we're looking for some sort of point. And every point is made up of an x and a y, correct. So we have x comma y. But even more broadly, let's think about in terms of we have an input and an output. Well, in this case, we know the x. We know our input. And so let's go ahead and fill that in. We're going to say, okay, 3 comma something. All right. Well, let's look at our point. We know that for this to be a point, our 3 is positive, so we're going to move on the x-axis to the right 3. So we're going to go over 1, 2, 
3, and I'm just going to draw a dotted line going straight up and straight down. We know that this dotted line is the line x equals 3. It's every single value on this line, your x coordinate is going to be 3. All right? Now what we want to do is we want to find out where does this dotted line of x equals 3, where does it cross our function? Well, if we look, it looks like that dotted line crosses right there. Our goal then is we know the x value of our coordinate point. It's where it crosses right there. We then want to draw a dotted line going horizontally. And this will actually tell us where is that point at on the y-axis. And y'all tell me, what is the y value of this point? It is 2. And so basically we're saying, even though we don't have a function, even though we can't write it out algebraically, even though we can't plug in a 3 and do all the math to find out the 2, we can still, still tell just by looking at this graph. Let's try one more. Why don't we go ahead and try what, what is y when, let's say, x equals... Hmm. How about when x equals 5? Okay, so we want to know what is y when x equals 5. Well, should I go up 5 or should I go to the right 5? If I know x equals 5, I should go to the, to the right. So we can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now let's go ahead and draw our dotted line. Okay. And we know that it's crossing our function right about there. So I'll even extend the function. And let's go ahead and continue up. So we're at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And so we know that on this line, we have this point crossing x equals 5 right here. And I want to draw my dotted line until I touch the y-axis. And y'all tell me, at what height or what y value is this point? What's the y value of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so how would we write this point? We'd write our x value, we know, 5, and we know it's crossing at the y value of 7. And so you got three more problems. Go ahead and try these out. See if you can take that given x or that given y and see if you can find on your given line what is the other corresponding value. All right, good luck.